Good afternoon. If you are joining us from the previous panel, we're going to be switching gears and we're going to shift over into the future. First of all, let me just say that it's an honor for me to be sitting alongside such, such esteemed panelists and talking about an exciting uh, endeavor such as Neom. But before we jump into Neom, let's talk about the backdrop on which this endeavor came to be. If you're not following what's happening within the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, three years ago, uh, with the support of King Salman al Saud, Crown Prince Mohammed al Salman announced Vision 2030, which is a long term economic diversification strategy that's underpinned by social and cultural reform. Neom is a part of that diversification push. And when we talk about a blueprint for a sustainable life, Neom is it, um, and it will be it uh, in terms of bringing the future into the now. <clears throat> Excuse me. But a picture is worth a thousand words, and our panelists wanted to ensure that uh, everybody had a chance to view an exciting video. So let's take a, let's take a look. A place on Earth like nothing on Earth was announced in 2017. Not a dream, but an awakening, an idea and an ideal, a journey and a destination, a blank canvas that will spark new learning, encourage enterprise, investment and ingenuity, a sustainable land of opportunity, a place for inventors and innovators, engineers and entrepreneurs to call home, where the pioneers of new technologies will power the industries of tomorrow for generations to come. A blueprint created by visionaries with over 40 different nationalities, focusing on 16 sectors such as water, energy, sport, tourism, health and well-being on a scale never attempted or seen before. Neom is this amazing location in the top left of Saudi Arabia. It is on the edge of the mountains and on the edge of the sea. Neom is all about unusual things. Neom stands for the new future. Well, because it's a clean slate approach. There is no legacy to start from scratch, to build something which will be so unique in a pace and in a dimension that can only be found at Neom. We have a visionary leadership, we have a green slate, and we have the ability to create our own regulations. That is going to be the wow factor for us at Neom. Well, Neom, for me, is a land of opportunity. At the crossroads of civilization, it's a land of the future, with a beautiful past and a Mediterranean-style climate. Its pristine geography, historical sites, coral reefs, rare and endangered species are protected and respected. With more than $500 billion committed from the government to fund the project, NEOM is a fully independent tomorrow in the making that is ready to invest in today. NEOM. Nice. <laughs> Thank you very much for watching. So the video actually touched on several of the verticals that we're about to deep, deep dive into in terms of geography, governance, industries, et cetera. But before we deep dive into those verticals, let's take a look at the overview. So Nadmey, I'll start with you. Can you give us a sense of how Neom came to be, uh, its vision, and, and what, led to, what led up to its inception? Well, first of all, thank you, Fatma, to be our moderator. And thanks for the arrangements that brought me and Andrew on the stage to talk about Neom. It's a very daring uh, idea in our mind. Uh, really, Neom is, is a dream that was put together and a vision that our duty is to bring that dream to reality. Neom is basically uh, thousands of years of all. It goes back to 5,000 years ago when it is the land where civilizations and religions all met in that area. Neom is not just a construction site. It's really work that we want to put as a proposition to the world how the future will look like, how the city of the, of the future will, actually how countries of the future will look like, how livability and how we can make our countries and cities livable, sustainable, 
and moving toward the future technology and innovation. So uh, alongside that, in terms of the geography, tell us about its, its land breadth and the significance of its geographical position. Well, as you saw in the movie, um, it's a very beautiful piece of land. I have to say, you all get to go there and visit to realize that the film was not even fair for what that land looks like. It's a very beautiful land <coughs> surrounded by 300 miles of shoreline. And it's not just any sea, it's the Red Sea, which is the least explored sea in the world and the most protected, cleanest, pristine on Earth. In the middle, we have a beautiful desert that really goes on the land. Uh, the size of Neom is the size of Belgium or the size of the two states of Massachusetts and uh, New Jersey. So you can, you can imagine how huge this land is. Neom is in a location that makes it extremely special. Uh, you can imagine from Neom you can reach within three to four hours the whole continent of Europe and on the other side, half of Asia. So 40% of the population of the whole world are within four hours from Neom. That makes Neom a very special location. 10% of the shipping lines activities run by Neom. And when I say by Neom, I'm talking about 10, 15 miles away from Neom. You see all these activities on, 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 the, on the Red Sea. It has a very special weather that is different than all what we think of the Middle East when it comes to summer and winter. We are 20 degrees Fahrenheit lower than the average degree of a, of a temperature in the Middle East. And, and that gives it the specialty of what Neom is going to be. And when I tell people that January and February every year, it snows and it stays for two months. Yeah. And people say, snowing in Saudi Arabia? That's exactly what goes on in Neom. We're actually looking into how can we make skiing resorts in Neom. <laughs> that sounds exciting and different. So I remember when Neom was announced in 2017 at the uh, uh, Future Investment uh, Initiative. Where is Neom now in terms of implementation? Well, that's a good question because uh, for the complexity, the size of such a project, <coughs> the biggest and the most important aspect of it, led by our board and our chair, is take your time in putting the best, correct, accurate strategy for this project. It's been two years of putting the strategies for all sectors that are driving the economy of Neom and put the most accurate, perfect plan before we rush into implementation. So we were busy the last two years putting the strategies, the plans, and the implementation the plan as we go. Around, the, around or toward the end of this year, we will reach that point when we present the whole strategy for NEOM and get the endorsement and the approval of, uh, of uh, NEOM. But we are doing more than that. We are going through and around uh, three, four lines of implementation. While we are doing strategies, we are also working on putting the funding law and the governance of this region, because this is going to be a special zone, and we want to make sure we put the best model of, of funding law to facilitate attracting the, the economies of, of this place. We're also been busy putting the regional and the urban planning. We get an opportunity that no one ever gets it to do it right. Building a country from zero. And to do that, we have to do all of these items. Guess what? Over and above all of this, we started construction. We are now moving sand, moving earth, because time is of essence. We are targeting to put this whole dream into reality by 2030. We, can, we cannot waste a minute. So we're going over these four elements at the same time. 
So let's double click actually on industries, and, uh, and I'll shift over to you, Andrew. So coming off of the video and what Nubme had just mentioned, in terms of industries and lifestyles, as the former chairman and CEO of Dow Chemicals, taking into account a more kind of micro view, it appears that Neom will broadly encompass several sectors and industries, some that are traditional while others are a little bit more futuristic. How will they work together to achieve Neom's objectives? Thank you, and also thank you for having me. It's a true privilege to share the stage with Nami and to talk about this aspirational endeavor that I think in your minds you should think about when we think about colonizing Mars and what humanity needs to do. And what humanity will do here, uh, led by uh, the team that Nami leads, but also by the kingdom's desire to enter the 21st century to show aspiration, is to create a quality of life and to bring industries that really do define the future. Don't think the past forward. Think about a bit like today when you think of Athens. Maybe you think of Karen Athens, but you also think of Athens as the home of democracy and philosophy. One day, Neom will look back and say, Neom was the home, the beginning of where humanity really created the principles and disciplines of civilization as we want it to be in the digital age and in sustainability. And those two key pillars, clean, green, we'll talk, the video talked about it, have an imagery where there may be a quality of life where we don't have streets and roads, where we're drones and, and robots and automation and AI is intersecting, and the industries for those sectors are being built there. Think about smart urbanization, smart energy usage. Think of this is the land of fossil fuels, can the kingdom is. This will be without fossil fuels. Think about an economy that we all aspirationally want to have where our children can have these jobs of the future and the education systems that support it. Think about a lifestyle where you can have leisure and really enjoy life with all this wonderful location. And I've been, and, and the video did not do it justice, and even Nadmi's description did not do it justice. And you know, I consider the privilege of this audience here, you are ahead of the game. You just got an invite. Go, <laughs> go. Because to experience this today, and to then visualize, you know, I mean, when I visualize the future, I'm of the age that thought of the Jetsons, right? Yes. Some of you may know who the Jetsons were, some of you have no idea what I'm talking about. <laughs> we, we, we thought about this cartoon and this Jetsons. This, this is the kind of thing you have to put your head into. And that quality of life and the cities that we will build that will create, digi you know, Industry 4.0 in Neom will have the regulations and the financial support, the human talents and capabilities organized for them. This is what Nadmi will create, the platform for that. So it sounds like it's really facilitating uh, an attractive lifestyle of efficiency, if you will. Um, so I, I want to pivot over to governance and, and, and get both of your perspectives. Um, so uh, both of you have alluded to the elements of governance tangentially within your responses, so it would be great to kind of double click on, on both of those. For, so from a structural on the ground perspective as well as from an oversight view. So let me, let's start with you. How will Neom uh, be operating? Is it an international special zone uh, or is it linked to KSA's legislative uh, system? Well, before I talk about law and governance, I want to emphasize on one important point. NEOM is not a Saudi project. NEOM is a global project. It's a global initiative that will require and expect the whole world to be part of making it, to be part of transforming that dream to reality, because it was made to partner with the world. For that, to happen for uh, the facilitation of running NEOM as a special zone, we had to come up with our own law of that zone. The law that will facilitate, encourage the easy of business, the attraction of the best talents and brains in the world to come there and do what they cannot do anywhere in the world, to experiment, to, to do research science, to do business, to make you know, difficult businesses come easy and be implemented in Neom. We've taken all of this in, in consideration as we are driving, drafting the, the law of Neom as we are doing it today. We are in the midst of writing the draft of the law. And to do that, we've talked to many people in the world, 
to similar zones in the world. We want to learn from where other zones have worked and where they have not worked it right. We want it to be the best model ever put to the world so they can have the trust and the confidence of if we come to Neom, we can do what we cannot do anywhere. Within governance, the governance of Neom, as it is also being drafted now and we are close to finish, Neom is going to be governed by a governor, by authority that are on their own be doing the business to make things happen. So the company today will evolve to be the authority tomorrow. And hopefully within the next few years, we will be an authority that is managing and running the business on that law and governance we created. So before I shift over to you, Andrew, just really quickly, if we can double click, you, you've talked about the commercial aspect of it, but what about socially? Well, the law address all of it, all the business, social norms. Uh, Neom is going to be an area where it's going to be a model like Andrew mentioned earlier, where livability and the best standards and practice and norms are, are being practiced anywhere in the world. We will be no different than any piece of the world, if not advanced and ahead of the world. So, Andrew, I'd like to come over to you uh, for a minute. Uh, so you're also on uh, the advisory board. And so where does Neom fit in terms of the current stakeholder landscape and its linkages to entities within the kingdom and their leadership? It's, it's, uh, if you think about the roles I have in the kingdom right now, which I'm very proud of, no more so than being on NADMI's advisory board as we are articulating, this is something that I hopefully will keep telling my grandchildren and they will tell their grandchildren that their great-grandfather was part of this. Uh, it's, I've also am seeing the kingdom in a way after going there for 25 years. These last three years are uh, indescribable in the sense of the pace of change. I was part of seeing Deng Xiaoping's China open up, spent 15 years in Hong Kong, I went in and out of China multiple times, and I saw the pace of reforms there, economic to beget social, and, and obviously not quite there yet with democracy, but I saw the same sort of growth of a country trying to impact its immediate environs. They created special economic zones, you may remember. Here we have something very parallel. The kingdom is racing to its future. You may not all see it, I encourage you to study it. You've got to see the granular details. So I sit on the advisory board of NEOM, but also I'm on the special advisor of the PIF, the Sovereign Wealth Fund, that owns NEOM right now. This paralleling that's going on, the kingdom moving and NEOM being the aspirational leader, you know, he's got to move fast because the kingdom's moving fast. And this notion that we can actually create a new type of economy where the world sees the best of everything from a governance standard point of view, environmental standard, social standards, it's the world's standards. So don't stereotype it, get it out of your minds. Whatever you have in your mind that defines for you the kingdom of Saudi Arabia, when you talk about what we're talking about here, I encourage you to open your minds and see, come on the ground, visit what is happening to move to this new place on governance as articulated by Nadmi. That's what I'm seeing. Uh, I will tell you it's a human endeavor that needs the world's best talent. You've seen some of them on the, on the video there. He is attracting the world's best talent, but he's in, we're in a hurry, okay? You know, these cities were built in thousands of years in previous humanity. This one's gonna be built in 10. Think of the pressure on this guy. So, <laughs> so, pressure. <laughs> no pressure. So, so we're, we're here to help him. <laughs> And I encourage you all to study the governance aspect of it because that question comes up a lot. So just really quickly, uh, you had mentioned your, your grandchildren. I'm just curious as a legacy, what motiv motivated you to get involved in this, uh, in this endeavor? I, I have lived my entire life as an adventurer and pioneer coming from outback Australia, son of Greek immigrants, blue collar, the American dream, call it in Australia. Uh, I've always felt this need to travel and explore and conquer and be part of. And Dow gave me that platform. And when I was at Dow, I did what I did because I felt that we had to define the future, not live the past, respect the past. It has rhythms, as Mark Twain's prone to say. The past teaches you a lot, history teaches you a lot. But this future we're going to as humanity, this nine billion person planet that we have here, this notion of digitization, 
I'm an explorer of the new frontiers. The kingdom of Saudi Arabia is moving to something which could change the world, change the region, and change the world. And why wouldn't you want a seat at that table if you're privileged to be offered it? Good point. Um, so, Nadmi, I'm going to pivot back to you for just a second, and let's zoom out and talk about uh, geopolitics for a quick second. So, uh, let's be honest, the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia lives in a rough neighborhood. Um, so, in terms of regional geopolitical dynamics, what are the geopolitical dynamics or the implications thereof on uh, an endeavor such as NEOM? Well, what we have talked about so far is the future. Andrew expressed it so well. And I think when you are on a mission to build the future, not only of the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, but the future of the world, we better focus on what we are good at. I tell you, when you ask me this question, what come to my mind is, I'm a construction engineer. I'm a project engineer. <laughs> You're a I'm on a mission. Engineer. I'm on a mission to transform a great dream and not only Saudi dream, it's a dream of the world. And when people in the world understand NEO more and more, they will understand why it is so critical that we focus on transforming this big dream to reality to serve the whole world. So I understand the world as, you know, political activities all over the world are there, will always be there, and we will be focused on making this dream come true. Uh, and I believe, actually, if we and when we get to the reality of this dream, the world will be much better, the region will be much better, and for sure the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia will be where it wants to be and where it deserves to be. And that what drives me every day I go to the office. And Andrew mentioned that too in the film, I have a team that comes from 42 countries. Wow. Most of it is Europe, America, China, and Russia, and all over. And one and, Australian. And, and one Australian. <laughs> Actually, I have more than, than one. <laughs> and when this team comes every morning, we live together, and we look at what we are going to accomplish by the end of that day, and what it means to the world, to these 45 countries, all are they, they are focused on, let's make it happen. And that's what comes to my mind. <laughs> so, um, just to kind of uh, build on that a little bit further, Andrew, can you give us a sense of what Neom's investment approach is and maybe some of the regions that are uh, potentially viable platforms for, the, for those? Yeah, I, I mean, I really th I think the video sh uh, showed you a number. Um, I mean, if the kingdom wanted to, it could do it all itself. But not under the public investment fund, five hundred billion dollars. I mean, mm -hmm. I mean, just in case the financially oriented people in this room, which I imagine is all of you, uh, given the nature of this conference, uh, that that's a significant number up on that screen, and the kingdom could do it pretty much itself. But that would defeat the whole purpose that we just described the last twenty minutes or so. So there's going to be opportunities to create regional platforms of all sorts in infrastructure, in sports, entertainment. Yeah, you, participation is encouraged. Uh, different equity vehicles, different investment vehicles. There's going to be high-end resorts, high-end accommodations. Um, you know, I think we clearly can say Dubai showed that the region can do this, okay? But d this is not Dubai, okay? So, so you know, the, Dubai focused on where it did. This is grabbing the whole ecosystem that the planet needs to have in place. This is the world's most important scaling project ever. Why wouldn't you want to put, if you're, into, so if you're into social impact investing, this is one of the most important social impact investing projects ever. We're going to prove that we can coexist with this technology that is being created for us, that is currently distracting us on our handheld devices with apps. When digital hits mainstream, we better be ready for it as humans. We'll have the talent assembled there to help humanity go to this new place. And I've got to tell you, that's participation, financial and or partnership models.
So just uh, very quickly before we wrap up, uh, and a quick thank you to, the, to SALT and, and, and the SALT team. Love me, uh, I, I want to yield the floor to you as we, as we close out um, and just uh, ask you, if you were to leave, uh, uh, if you were to speak directly to the audience and leave a resonating thought and sort of a final message about Neom, what would that be? I will go beyond that a little bit. I may take one or two more minutes. Sure. Extra, if, if you don't mind. Of course. I want to go back one to one uh, to what Andrew mentioned on the progression and evolution of what's happening in the kingdom. I'm a father of three daughters, one boy. They're all up and uh, working in different places. We talk about what's happening in our country with a pride. We talk about the changes that are happening every day the last two, three years. And when we blend that with Neom, their dad's project, they say, Dad, we are not only proud that this is happening for the kingdom, we are more proud because we see what this is going to happen to the, to the region and to, to the world. The hope and the excitement of what's happening in the kingdom makes Neom the natural initiative that the kingdom want to put as a proposition to the world to see let's be together let's work together on driving this dream to reality with also closing remarks i would say the message i want to leave to everybody here that dream you saw on the film the description of the dream that andrew and i did it is happening it is reality coming and we are going to make that happen in 10 years to come my advice to everybody here please be part of transforming that dream to reality because i think and i believe strongly we will be all proud of what the world when they look back have managed to bring future in our hand Thank you very much, gentlemen. Thank you very much. And that concludes our panel. Thank you.